Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm about to start a podcast. We'll talk about the government shutdown and faith and finances. I think that'll be a good topic. We'll talk about the government shutdown. We'll talk about our finances and we're going to talk about our faith. Just hold tight because I'm, I'm about to put a, a sweater on, you know, that'll be more a lady like when you agree. Just hold tight. Let me get my sweater. I'll be right back with you. Is this better? Is this a little more lady like? Put my little sweater on so that we can talk. Because I got some good stuff I want us to talk about this evening, okay? I got some great things I want us to talk about. Um, it's going to be a good little conversation. Ooh, I just thought about something. Okay, I'll be right back. Two seconds, you guys. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all can check out my bed because I love pillows, as you can see. Here I come. Right back, right back. All right, you guys, I'm back. Good evening, good evening, or good morning to my Facebook friends, to my YouTube family. I'm going to show y'all what I want to get. Hold on, what I do with it? I want to get something that I wanted to have for you guys. Okay. Check this out. <laughs> now, y'all know I'm crazy. You know what I'm saying? Check that out. Isn't it cool? I want you guys to still take me seriously. Even though I'm going to put this mask on. It does have significance and representation all at the same, okay? Still has significance and representation all in the same. So, like I was telling you all this evening, I wanted to talk to you all about the government shutdown, your faith, and your finances. You know, it's been, you know, this is, it's been another, another hot topic that everyone has been talking about. And it's been so consuming, you know, not just for the government employees. Like, first off, we have to understand that there are people that are currently out of work. Okay? That's first off. We have we have to understand that that people are off work with no pay. You know, they did vote that once the government reopened that, you know, people would be compensated, as they should, because you have people that are can you know, you have people like they say, the TSA workers, law enforcement workers, you know, fed the feds and things like that. They still have to work. You have jails and you have prisoners and, and things like that. People still have to go and keep in control of those situations, even though they might be, they might not be getting paid. And, you know, what's so crazy about it, you got to understand a lot of people live check to check. I mean, that's just real talk. A lot of people live check to check. Can y'all see me like this? Y'all like me better up with my, y'all like me better up. Maybe I should give them a little chair. Because I'm going to go over to the bed where I have my laptop and everything set up. So that, you know, we can kind of go through some very good, good details um, as far as it's concerned. So, like I was just saying, a lot of people are living check to check. You know, before the government shut down, you might have some people that were already behind on bills. You know, prime example with me, you know, I you know, had just, you know, ended my employment and some good girlfriends of mine, you know, they thought enough of me in London to, you know, help make sure that I could have my baby something for her, her birthday, London birthday, December 15th, December 25th is Christmas right around the corner. And my girlfriends sacrificed, you know, did what they could do to help me ensure that my little girl had a good Christmas throughout my storm and then bam, just like that. Now government shut down. You know, you know, it's it's oh my gosh, it's you know, and then it's 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 such like the media and 
everybody, they sensationalize so many things because, you know, they have instilled fear in so many people about everything. You know, they like they say, oh, it's going to mess with the food stamps. It's going to mess with Section 8 and housing. And all of that is a part of the government hood, housing, urban, urban development. You know, Section 8 vouchers, things to that nature, and USDA and all those things as far as your food stamps. All of those are federally ran organizations, you know, and things to that nature. But what kills me, what really kills me is like, man, y'all got to understand. I have been through so much these past couple of months. And I really got a testimony about it. And that's why, you know, I wanted to talk about faith and finances. Like, they have to be intertwined, you know, especially when you're willing to put in the work. You know, when you're willing to work hard and work towards your goals and things like that. Like, when I decided to change careers and, you know, I got some good things coming up. I don't want to talk too much about it. I am going to take you guys with me on a journey via my YouTube page with me in London and everything that, you know, God has in store for the future as far as we're concerned. We're going to take you on the journey with us. But you have to have faith. Like, what is it in a person's brain that make them think they're not going to make it? Like, what is it that... Like, why? what, what puts that doubt in your brain? That, oh, if I miss one paycheck and, and God knows, God knows, God knows, God, God knows. I know what that's like. You know, when you live in check to check, one missed check can throw your whole thing off. Okay, you're going to have a missed check. With the missed check, you're going to miss some bills. You're going to miss some payments. With the missed payments, it's going to be late fees added on to all what you already owe. You owe you owe eight hundred. They're going to add forty dollar late fee. That's an extra forty. You pay your phone bill. It's a hundred dollars. It's late. That's an extra thirty. So everything is multiplying. You know what I'm saying? I know this mask is dope, isn't it? Yeah. Oops. I should have got my little string off of it right there. There you go. Get the little string off. Everything multiplies. So that puts a person in even more debt. And then think about the people that have to work and not get paid, how difficult that is for them. You know, if it wasn't if it wasn't if it wasn't for a lot of people having family, friends, and close loved ones that cared about them and, and helped saw about them, like some of my girlfriends that are married. It's a blessing to have a partner who's also pulling their weight in the marriage. You know, that's truly, truly a blessing because you have some people that are single that all of the bills are on them. They pay all of the bills on a monthly basis. You know what I'm saying? So it does help, you know, when you're in a marriage. When And when I mean marriage, I mean when both parties are pulling their weight. And you're in a position where you could possibly, you know, y'all probably have a little savings, a little nest egg. You have a little put away for a rainy day. It's not like that for everyone. You know, people have been helping, like my church morning view this um, this um, Sunday. You know, they gave out, you know, they gave what they could. You know, they gave out money to um, the church members that were federal workers to help them because everyone understands the struggle, you know, as far as food, as far as things like that. I was telling some people, I, I had one of my um, co-workers, one of my old co-workers, they were kind of talking about how, you know, they had gone to a food pantry and how, um, you know, to get food for their families and this, you know, and they're affected by the shutdown and they went to get food for their families and, you know, they gave them scraps, basically. The thing about it, and one of the comments that I made, back when they closed the government down in 2013, and I remember the government had been closed down. It was going on almost two weeks. And so, you know, some colleagues, they were saying, oh, I'm going to go get unemployment. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. 
And so at the time I was living downtown and I used to work in hospitality. You know, that's one of my fields that I'm good at is hospitality. So I said, you know what? I live downtown. All of these hotels are downtown. So I decided I went and got dressed up. I put on my, you know, some of my best business attire and I went out. And I went to quite a few hotels. I uh, I had went to the Peabody, um, who were going to hire me, but they wanted me full time. And I did have a job. We were just going through a shutdown. But I most definitely needed a backup because, like they say, you can't put all your nests in one egg. One, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Excuse me. So I got out that day. And I'll never forget where I ended up working at. And, I, you know, I keep the places that I've worked. I'll disclose, I won't disclose those things. I'll keep those things private. Because people that know me, they know exactly where I'm talking about. So, I went that day. I went, and like I told you, I went to quite a few hotels. And so, where I ended up working at, I'll never forget the young lady, Jennifer, um, that works in Human Resources. I don't know where Jennifer is now. If she ever sees me, you know, if she ever comes, comes across my... Um, YouTube. Hi, Jennifer. How are you, sweetie? Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. And so I remember that day. I was so desperate. And I went in the H HR office and I basically told that girl, I was like, if y'all have a uniform right now, I will put it on. I was just that desperate because rent, utility, you know, you have rent, utilities, you have mortgages, you have vehicle expenses. On top of all of that, you have children. You know, they got to eat. They need food, water, clothing. You know, they need to be cared for on a daily basis. And so, you know, you have all of these bills and you have all these things going on. And so, I mean, I ended up, I got the job. That was back in 2013. And I stayed there until 2016 because God really blessed me with a good job and a good position. I wasn't even looking for it. I was just looking for something. It, I, was in the, I, I was feeling like, Lord, if I just get something $10 an hour, I'll be happy with that because I'll be getting something coming in and not nothing. And so, you know, you have to adopt those kind of attitudes. Like, in this era, in this generation, what everyone needs to understand and see, you got to get in the mindset of independence. You got to get in the mindset and get out of the mindset of depending on someone else to provide for you and your family and yourself. There are so many means of making money nowadays. Um, I was telling some friends of mine the other day. If you have kids that are good and great at um, video games and stuff like that. There are people that are making bank playing video games. There are people that are making all kinds of money on video games. You know, it's, it, it's so many ways to make money where you don't, where you can make money on your own and you don't have to be so dependent on someone else to help you. People, I mean, yes, if we could come to a situation where food stamps might stop or something like that. But the focus is not on the food stamp stopping. The focus, brothers and sisters, to all of my YouTube listeners that are out here within the sound of my voice, the focus is on you winning, you providing for yourself without the help of anyone. Why not have that kind of attitude? Why not have that kind of winning spirit? That way you won't have to, you won't have to worry about it. I end up getting that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, being a beauty shop baby. <laughs> I really thank God for that. I thank my mother for that. Big Art, you know, being beauty salon and, and barbershop owners. You know what I'm saying? When you're, in, I, I have an ex that, you know, he owned clothing stores. So I have, you know, I've been around a lot of entrepreneurs in my life. And as, and as you can see, a lot of, entre even people that, are famous celebrities. A lot of them end up getting into entrepreneur getting into entrepreneurship because there's so much potential there. You know, it's no cap to the amount of money you can make if you're an entrepreneur because what you put in is what you get back. 
So, you know, in a situation like that, you can't lose. So we can't always be focused on, oh, I'm going to lose this. I'm not going to be able to get that. No, switch your focus. If they stop, if the government shutdown continues and they stop food stamps or, you know what I'm saying, they start messing with your Section 8 housing and vouchers, don't focus on the loss. Focus on your next plan. What are you going to do now? Okay, I don't have food stamps. What am I going to do as an individual, as a person, as a human being, as a tiger, as a lion, as the greatest animal that you want to be out here on the earth as a beast out here. What am I going to do to provide for my family and put food on this table so that I can eat as well? That's the focus. Lastly, you know, and like I told you, that all ties into your faith and your finances. Do you have faith in yourself? Do you think you can't make it? Oh my gosh, people have been through so much. I have been through so much that would shock everybody. You know, if I tell you about some of the difficulties that I've run into in life. But just like Meek Mill always says, everything is in a loss, it's a lesson. Everything is in a loss, it's a lesson. It's so true. I was telling I was telling London and some of her teammates last night they played Jumpy Freeman, my alma mater, and got whooped. As usual, what's up, JPF, Du Bois? I love you girls, but like I told you guys, our new team, we've been around since forever. I was Miss John P. Freeman, class of 94 at that. You know I am very proud of that, so, you know, I can speak on it. I can't believe I'm rocking this mask this whole interview, but I wanted you guys to see it. Off the chain, in it? Beautiful. Beautiful. And so... Faith and finances. All right. So now they're saying that, okay, we already found out about TSA and I'm not going to hold you, okay? I always try to keep my videos within the 20 minute mark because I don't want to keep you forever talking because every, everyone knows I'm very talkative. But another issue that I wanted to raise up was about, what, like we talked about, the unemployment people, people that are unemployed, is the people that have to go to work and aren't receiving any pay. Oh, gosh, that is crazy. You know, that's why it's important to have savings. That's why. But, like, even, even like, people that have 401Ks and things like that, um, they work for the government. That, sh that part of the government shut down, too. So you can't even go into any of your savings accounts, you know, unless you have e-trade, e-commerce, things of that nature outside of work. But if you have 401ks within your job and you work for the federal government, even those branches are closed down. So you can't even hit them up and get money out of your, you know, get hardship withdrawals and everything out of your 401k. You can't even do that. That's why you got to dig deep. That's why you got to dig inside. That's why you got to get that faith and know that at the end of the day, God or whatever higher being that you guys believe in is going to take care of you and going to see you through at the end of the day. So what if you go hungry a day or two? Not a, none of us are missing meals. Everybody got a little meat on them. So what if you went hungry a day or two? Drink water. Empty out their refrigerator. We got plenty of stuff. We go in our refrigerator in our cabinets. Unthaw, unthaw some of that food in there. Make it do what it do. Eat oatmeal like Florida Evans. I love oatmeal anyway. So you ain't got to worry about it. Give me some oatmeal, a little, um, a little silk, almond, vanilla milk with a little sugar. I'm in there. I'm good to go. We just got to make sacrifices. So what? And in the end, we might lose a few pounds. Everybody get a little skinnier. Right or wrong. And we happier and good to go. <laughs> Why not? Since when we above that, recognizing and humbling ourselves. But as far as the employees that have been having to work without the money, oh gosh, that is, I know that has to be terrible. Because, you know, if you don't have a support system, if you're a person out here that's on your own, you got to depend on yourself getting to work, getting back, gas money, food money, lunch money. You at work hungry, it all get out. 
you know, you have people that's been getting together, and I'm sure your employers and, you know, your higher ups and stuff, you know, this, that are essential and are at work, are helping you guys out, but I know that has to be rough. Oh, I know that has to be rough, and I know that has to feel unfair, but you are going to end up getting your money back because it's already been voted on. So, you know, even though the is going on right now, you know, you are going to end up getting your money back for all of your pain. And I know that all of you guys have been calling in sick because, yes, it is unfair. Like they say, I think it was down in Miami. They closed down the whole TSA terminal because maybe I guess they had gotten together and I all decided we're not going in. We're not about to get a dime. We're not going into work today. And they didn't. But um, one of the last things that I was going to talk about was the tax returns and stuff. Like, you know... Aside from the Internal Revenue Service, you know, you have accountants, you have CPAs, and you have um, tax companies that, you know, they're all intertwined, and tax season is a big, big season for them. And so, you know, that's, that's when a lot of the people in the tax industry, you know, aside from the Internal Revenue Service, really make their money. You know, accountants, they make their money. You know, some accountants make their money annually, depending on if they work with businesses, corporations, LLCs, things to that nature. You know, in that instance, you know, accountants, they, they're employed around the clock. But, you know, you have some people who depend on the tax season. They've, um, you know, they have, they have businesses and things like that. So this affects them as well, the shutdown. And so, you know, they um, they put the email out and they put the press uh, release out that, you know, returns are going to get processed, you know, at the, on the 28, things of that nature. I just have advice. I can't tell, I can't tell any adults because everyone who filed tax returns, you know, a majority 18 and up. You know, anybody who works, but the majority 18 and up. I can't tell anyone what to do, but I know that, you know, tax season, t January 28th, everyone is going to be filing. And as of tonight, and it's going to be confirmed, but rumor has it, and it's, I've read it on a few um, articles, which is why I had my computer out, which I never got to. I know that y'all see it. I know my, uh, I got my computer out. Look at me. I don't want to mess up my, you know, I got my charger on. There you go. But I had all of that out because, you know, I wanted to discuss some of those things, things with you guys, um, you know, and give it to you from an educated standpoint. You know, one coming directly from, you know, the government and everything that they've been saying. But, okay, we're going to file the 28th. Um, so they've said that they are going to call uh, approximately 46,000 employees back to come back and process the tax returns. You know, I understand the eagerness for the money. You have some, some companies that are going to give you loans and stuff to each their own. You know, you handle it exactly how you want to handle it. If you need the money, if you want to go ahead and do the loan, go ahead and do it. I can't knock anybody, any adult, for making a decision that's best for their families. Um, some With some people, I will most definitely tell you just to wait a minute. You have some people that have to pay anyway that don't get refunds. So they don't care. They waiting close to April the 15th, which I'm sure they're going to move the date back a little further just because of everything that's going on. I think they might end up giving everybody an extension of file past the 15th of April. You know, you already get one for um, October the 15th, but I think they are going to um, give you an extension for, you know, the initial year, uh, the initial time, which is April the 15th. Um, I would advise people, if you can wait... Wait, it is going to be kind of like a clusterfuck, pardon my French, but it's, it's going to be kind of like a clusterfuck a little bit because, you know, it's going to be so many returns there with so many in, few employees and, you know, so many intricate details because you want everyone's return filed properly. Everyone wants their return filed properly. You do not want people to mess up on your tax returns because that that's going to cause you to file amended tax returns. That's going to be even longer. Then it might put you in a situation where you have to owe. So, you know, January 28th is the day. They are going to call some people back to work. And everyone that works for the government has integrity. We know that. You know, everyone that works taxes. And we will hope that everybody that is in business does their business with integrity. So, 
But what's so crazy about it, you guys, with human nature, man, sometimes human nature can even fly out the door. Because you you might you may have some people, you know, that are so disgruntled, you know, oh my gosh, I gotta pay this and that bill, I gotta do this and that, I'm coming in here, I had to borrow gas money to even get here, I'm at work hungry, I haven't eaten, I don't have enough money to buy me any lunch, this, that, any other. You never know the quality. You never know if your returns are going to be filed properly right then and there. So my advice is for everyone to be patient, okay? They're telling us things, but as time progresses, we're going to know for sure. But my advice to everyone, myself included, is to just be patient with this situation. It's a very, very complex situation. And I understand everyone needs their money. From the employees of the government, to the people that do taxes, like I told you, CPAs, accountants, um, tax preparers, people who have tax businesses, they help people, with, you know, file their taxes. Uh, and I'm talking about small, you know, mom and pop type businesses, not not like the huge ones, just H&R Block, Jackson Hewitt and stuff. You know, you have people that are self-employed to have these businesses. And so I ask everybody to be patient because God is going to provide. And you have to have patience and understand that with faith, God is going to take care of your finances. Okay? You got to have faith. Please be patient because it's going to be a little chaotic. It's crazy how the government is shut down right at tax time. So it is going to be chaotic. But I ask everybody to have patience. And if you can wait, Give it a little time because some people, you know, might, it might be so many people file their tax return at one time. And then you might have 46,000 people at work working them. Um, and they might have, if you got 46,000 people processing returns, they might get 460,000 returns to file properly and make sure you get the right refund and make sure that the right information and the correct information is on top of it. Then if they do it too fast, you might have out of the 460,000 returns that, that 46,000 employees have done, half of those might come back and need amendments. Because student loan came in or 1099, you know, might have came in or, you know, you might have omitted some income. So I ask all of you guys to be patient. And again, my advice to you is to have faith in your finances and understand and know that God can provide. And lastly, do not be so dependent on the government to take care of you. If you learn anything throughout this presidency, learn to be independent, learn to be an entrepreneur, learn to come up with ways with your family of making money and things that you guys can do to give all of you all a better life and create some kind of generational wealth and break that cycle, okay? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I came to you guys with the sincerest of hearts. I hope I did not offend anyone because I want everyone and all of us to do good. But leave with those things that I told you, okay? Have faith that God is going to take care of your finances. And also to be independent in your thinking. So what if, so what if you might get a little, you know, so what if your food stamps or something come late? So what if you don't get your money right when you need it? Make sacrifices. You know, like I told you, go in your freezer, unthaw, unthaw some of those things. Go to, your, some, go to some of your family members' houses and eat. If you give, it'll give you time, guys time to congregate and hang out and play and have fun. Okay? Last thing I'm going to do, you guys, and then I'm letting you go because I'm near 30 minutes. I like to keep mine under 30, okay? My auntie... Denise, I, I just saw her today, and she's also suffering from that. She got me in one of the gifts, and I just saw her to get my gift because, as you know, I was out of town during Christmas time. Look at what my baby got, uh, got me, you guys. She got me pajamas. Thank you, Denise. I love you, boo-boo. I'm going to be rocking these in one of my vlogs. Got my little pants and everything. You guys will see me in it. 
And then I also got a package from Amazon. Let's open this up and see what Amazon got for me. What she got Amazon? They, they sent some of my phone cases. Yay. Let's see what I got. Chill pills. That's a good one. Chill pills, no future. Come on now. Chill pill means check, take a chill pill. No future. Everything legit over here. <laughs> and the other one I got, oh yes. I got just thinking about all my little girls that I love and take care of and I see about and make sure they are in my little unicorn case. So I got me two great cases and I got me a beautiful Christmas gift. See, still getting gifts. Government shut down. God still provide. Peace and blessings to you all. I love you. I did not have to pull out. Peace and blessings to you all. I love you. I did not have to pull out my um, computer or any of my other things. But I do thank you guys so much for your support. Tell your friends to like and subscribe to my channel, Ashanti Stewart TV. Everything is going to be great and awesome. Peace and blessings. Stand strong. My sisters and brothers and everything that you're going through, stay prayerful. And have faith that God is going to take care of you. And I had to cover up my boobs because we're not doing all that. But you know what I'm saying? I have faith that God is going to take care of each and every one of us. And he's going to provide throughout this difficult time. I love you. Here go my sugar. Y'all ready? Y'all know I keep them lips glossed up for you. What's up, baby? You see what I'm saying? Where my sugar at? You know what I'm saying? Let you know I love you a little bit. You know, you're a little sugar boo. Mm.